literary analysis essay. All right, make sure you're checking your due dates on your assignments. But for us, on the 25th, um, that's in a little less than a week, your story request is due. This is basically a super simple five point assignment to make sure that you have picked your story. You know, all you have to do is say which story from the list of stories on page two is the one you are using. You do it, you get five points. Ooh, we're off to a good start on the paper. Uh, intro and outline due uh, on the 4th um, of October. That's a Wednesday. Um, the rough draft is going to be due on Friday the 6th noon. Anything in any class that's due on a Friday will be due by noon. Okay. Then on the 10th, the final draft is due. We don't have the tutor.com requirement for this paper. But you're welcome, if you found their feedback helpful, um, you are welcome to continue using them um, if you'd like. It's free. You don't have a limited number of papers you can submit. Okay? Questions so far? All righty. So here's the assignment. In modern America, people are often accused of being disconnected or distant from one another. Usually, technology gets the blame for this disconnect. However, one of the wonderful things about literature is it can connect us to people who have lived in the past. For this assignment, you're going to write a 1,200 to 1,500 word essay that takes one of the stories below, potentially two if you want to go that way, if you're doing a compare and contrast, and write an analysis of the story or stories. Since all the stories on this list were written before 1980, the picture of, world, of the world is going to be devoid of much of modern technology. In some of these stories, cars and planes didn't exist. The telephone was a rare luxury, and people still died of diseases like polio, smallpox, and tetanus. Yet, despite all this lack of technology, people still have many of the same thoughts, desires, dreams, and worries we have today. People are not that different. You can go back a thousand years, and people are still worried about the same basic things. Food, shelter, love, contentment spirituality, you know, um, a lot of these things don't change over time just because we have an iPhone. An iPhone's finally going to the USB-C, which is cool. Thank you, European Union. Um, yeah, despite all this lack of technology, people still have many of the same thoughts, dreams, and desires we have today. In your analysis of the story, I expect you to incorporate some or all the writing techniques you've read about in the chapters 10, 11, 13, 28, 29, 31, and of course, chapter 22, which covers writing about literature, okay? Questions so far? All righty. So for this essay, you'll send me your choice of story from the list provided below and submit it um, in the story request assignment, which is on Canvas. All you have to do is type the name of the story, hit and click Submit. The easiest five points you're going to get all term. This is, an, uh, this is an easy five points, so don't skip it. You will analyze the story using the article from Butte Community College as a guide. The web address of the article is on the tentative semester schedule. You may select one of the following styles from that article. So that article has more than these, what, seven styles that it discusses, but these, I want you to use one of these seven, okay? And there's a longer explanation in the article, okay? You can do a character analysis, for example, discussing characters' motivations or how they externalize themes and ideas, or how the character grows throughout the story. You can make that argument. Um, there's lots of ways you could go with the character or characters analysis. Point of view analysis. Who tells the story and how does this affect the telling? You know, for example, Geraldo, no last name, is in first person. It's told from Marin's perspective, as it's happening, really. Whereas Kate Chopin's story is, for the most part, third person limited. We have a narrator telling the story, but the narrator's inside Louise's head. Okay. Historical or cultural analysis, that is, how a piece reflects the beliefs and values of the society that produced it, or how history can shed light on a work for modern readers. Now. Since this isn't a research paper, in fact, if you use research, you get a zero, so don't do it. 
<laughs> um, I'll get more on that in a second. Um, but look at the culture that's being presented in the story. And there may be some fairly large historical event that's tied into the story. For example, the F. Scott Fitzgerald story, Babylon Revisited, you know, the Great Depression or the stock market crash does play a bit into that story. But that's a big enough historical event. You know, you know of that and know the context of that in terms of the story. Um, compare and contrast. Demonstrate similarity, difference, or superiority, or um, likes and dislikes. What are the connections between a couple different characters or a couple different themes um, or ideas that two different stories could present? Um, imagery analysis. Look at all those sensory details. How does it affect the story? You know, we see in the story of an hour by Chopin that when she looks out the window, she sees all this life. It's springtime imagery. Anytime an author uses the time of year, generally speaking, we should take a look at it to see if it's symbolic. Springtime can represent rebirth, fertility, growth. You know, we celebrate, we use rabbits and eggs at Easter. These are pagan holidays that were just squished into Christianity, okay? Um, that's why Easter changes every year. It's the first full moon following, or it's first Sunday following the first full moon after the spring equinox. It's not exactly a Christian calendar type of thing. Jesus was born in March, not December. You know, these are, you know, things that, but the important thing is the symbolism of these acts, not the exact date, right? Um, but if we are representing fertility, what better symbol than a rabbit? So, um, anywho, symbolism analysis, I've kind of touched on that. Ideas or themes analysis, you might look at the theme, you know, is it the individual versus society? Is it um, sexism? Is it um, man fighting within himself? Um, there's all sorts of ways we can go with the thematic analysis. Questions? So you can pick between those seven styles. First couple essays in the class, I like to give you a fairly deep set of choices so you can find something you're interested in writing about. All right, so if you want to use a story that's not on the list, you must clear it with me first. Okay, and I'm probably going to require that it's at least 30 years old, so 1993 or older. Um, do not consult secondary sources or other previously written essays for ideas or theories. And there's a caveat to that that I'll get to in a second. Use of any sources other than the story itself can result in a zero on the paper. If you use one cent, I've, I've given a paper zero on this assignment for one sentence from the internet, okay? It needs to be your own ideas, your own work. Now, of course, you can quote the story, but that's the only source you can use is the story, all right? Questions on that? All right, if you want to use a story that's not on the list, you must clear with me first. I already said that. Once you've selected your story, you need to read it closely a minimum of two times. We're actively reading the story. On the first reading, read for uh, an overall sense of the story. I've said that word way too many times in this assignment. Determine the appropriate criteria for evaluating it. On second and subsequent readings, take notes on the elements of the story that pertain to your chosen focus. I would find a story you like first and then decide how you want to analyze it, okay? Instead of the other way around. Well, I want to write a compare and contrast story and try to squeeze a couple of stories into it. I would rather you find a story that you want to read, and want to write about, and go from there. All right. Um... After reading the story, determine the main themes and ideas you see going on in the work. A theme is defined as a main idea or underlying meaning of literary work that may be stated directly or indirectly. The reason I say this 
is I don't want everybody to write a theme analysis necessarily, but you are going to get to the other types of analysis through seeing the main ideas the story is trying to explain. For example, if you're doing a character analysis, you know, what ideas do we see through that character? What themes do we see through that character? Um, you know, cultural analysis. What ideas are important to the people in the story? Okay, so that's why I say, you know, the first thing you should really determine is the ideas that are going on in your work. As much as possible, what I want for you to look uh, for a style of analysis that you're most interested in and examine the themes that will help, examining the themes will help with that. So in other words, again, find a story you think you might enjoy. Questions? Cool. In grading the final paper, I'll be looking for depth of ideas and analysis, use of supporting evidence. Supporting evidence here is evidence from the story, okay? and overall strength and clarity of the writing itself. Please note that this is not a plot summary of the story. It's not a book report. You know, the baseline is we're assuming you've read the story. Um, do not write about what happens in the story, but rather how the ideas of the story fit the style of analysis you select from above. When you are writing, assume that your reader has read the story. Notice I put that in bigger prints. So we're assuming the reader has read the story. Now, that's not to say you can't talk about stuff in the story. Far from it. Um, as a matter of fact, you should think about it as, imagine going to a movie with a friend of yours, right? Now, when you're walking to the car, or maybe you get coffee afterwards or whatever, you might talk about the film, right? Stuff you like, stuff you thought was stupid, all sorts of things. But you don't need to explain the plot to that person because you both sat down and watched the movie. Now, if you get home from that movie with a friend and your one of your parents says, oh, how was the movie? What was it about? That's a plot summary. You're answering that question, telling them what the movie was about. Okay, well, you know, two guys, you know, guy and a girl meet, they fall in love, they you know, have some sort of conflict, they break up for a little bit, and they get back together at the end. I just explained every rom-com of the last 30 years. Um, but that's a summary. That's not an analysis. Okay? An analysis would be, well, I thought Owen Wilson's acting was pretty poor in this one scene because he seemed to stumble through his lines and it didn't really work that well. That's analysis. Okay? Questions. Alrighty. On to page two, if I could get it to turn. There we go. I've already stated this, but I want to just emphasize it because I don't, I hate, I hate having to grade a paper with a zero on this, okay? It's not really giving a grade because you're getting the grade you earn based on the assignment, but all of your work on this paper should be original. It's not necessary to use outside sources in this paper. There will be a no tolerance policy for plagiarism. So do not copy from any internet sources, reviews, etc. Do not use any outside source for this paper other than your story. Use of outside sources, even a single sentence, can result, and it says can, not will, result in a zero on the paper. I have, in a lot of instances, just, you know, it's a zero on the grammar and mechanics grade, and I won't let you revise. But I'll give you some points so that you can continue in the class. Okay. Questions on that part of it. All right. Formatting stuff is pretty much the same as the first paper, but do remember that on this essay, you may want to write this down, I will not grade it until I have a correctly formatted version. This goes for all classes. Okay. So on the first paper, make your best effort at formatting correctly. Take my comments, work on improving, and hopefully it will be correct by this one. But if you're not, you don't lose points, but I'll just say you need to email me a correctly formatted version. I'll tell you the things you need to fix. It's only on the third and fourth papers that you would lose um, points for formatting. Okay? Questions on that? Okay, so I mentioned earlier that there was a caveat to the 
no secondary sources at all. Okay. Here's the story list. You need to pick a story from one of these sources. Okay. Am I expecting you to read all these stories? They're all great stories. I'd love you to read, read them all, but you don't have to. If you're not familiar with these stories, it's okay while you're picking a story to look up some online summaries just to see what the story is about. That way you can probably narrow it. You know, if you still can't decide, you can probably narrow it down to two or three, and then you can read those stories to see which one you want to use. Okay. So that's the caveat to no online um, source material. While you're picking the story, you can certainly you know, look up a short summary of the story just to see if it's something you'd be interested in. Okay? So I've listed here where you can find um, the stories. From Project Gutenberg, textbook I assume you can find. <laughs> From Project Gutenberg, um, the two Poe stories, Washington Irving, F. Scott Fitzgerald, and Catherine Mansfield. Now, with Gutenberg, you do want to write this down. With Gutenberg, you're going to have to search the author and maybe the title of the work. And it's probably going to have results that are a couple of collections, like short story collections. If you click on the collections and look at the table of contents, you should be able to find the story. Okay, But if you just put in Follow the House of Usher, for example, it probably will just send you or show you a bunch of links to collections. All right, you're going to have to look inside those collections to find the story. Online literature is a little bit more straightforward. Um, you can use To Build a Fire by Jack London. Yes, that's the same author that wrote an eyewitness account in Chapter 16. Um, the Yellow Wallpaper, um, this is a very famous short story where it's kind of working in magical realism and you know, it's about a woman whose husband, who's a doctor, locks her in her room because she has postpartum depression. Um, uh, past was just the worst, wasn't it? Um, anywho. Um, Bartleby the Scrivener by Herman Melville. This is probably Melville's most approachable work, with the exception maybe of Billy Budd. Um, but it's a good short story. A lot to talk about there. Rocking Horse Winter by D.H. Lawrence. Um, Snows of Kilimanjaro by Ernest Hemingway. I have the web um, addresses here to find those. Garden of Forking Pass. Um, and in Canvas, in the submission module, um, there's a copy of the assignment. So if you don't want to type all this stuff out, you can go uh, to the assignment file and, and click hyperlink. Um, Very Old Man with en Enormous Wings by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Um, all of these, with the exception of Marquez and Borges, Borges um, were originally written in English. Um, and, of course, the Borges and Marquez articles are not in Spanish, uh, so you don't have to be a language scholar to get that right. Um, questions on the paper. The final note that I will make about this essay is... Um, Take a look at the grading rubric. This is 150 points. First paper was 100 points. Um, so as we go along in the term, your papers are going to be worth more and more points. The idea behind this, I think I mentioned this with the syllabus, is if you improve your writing, you'll get more points. So you'll be rewarded um, for your diligence. Okay. Um, but yeah, that syllabus, or not syllabus, but rubric should really be um, your checklist for the paper. And God willing, I'll have your first essays graded before you have to turn this one in. All right, any final questions? All right, let me shut off the video.